Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised. Hey guys, welcome back to another week of the fuckery where you're disappointed but not surprised co-hosts. I'm Alex. I'm Addie. And this week we have a kind of a different episode for you guys. Yeah, it's not like super sexual fetishy this week for some reason. It's kind, kind of. of. Kind of fetish. You can have a fetish about this. You could totally have a <laughs> fetish about this. Like our guest. <laughs> <laughs> Just, he jerks off to this every <laughs> single night. <laughs> What happened to no sexual shit? <laughs> it's always sexual on our show. <laughs> anyway, so we have our friend Jay calling in. Again, guys, if it's a little, um, you know, audio e or whatever, we're doing our best. He's on his phone. So, but yeah, no, Jay is a serial killer expert. Expert. Fetisher. Expert. Fetisher. So we're going to have a whole serial killer episode tonight, guys. I'm excited for this because Alex yes. knows a lot about this shit. Because I'm weird. You're weird. Alex, I feel like you watch like the murder movies to like calm yourself down. I do. I get that a little bit. It's better than our real lives, right? No. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm always watching the true crime channel. Yeah, and I know like 50% of it, but I feel like this is going to be... Um, very informative for me. I'm actually reading a book right now called Sons of Cain. And I'm like, start. I'm only like 17 pages in. I was like trying to read a little bit more to like, you know, prep for the episode a little bit. But it's it's so fascinating to me. So Jay, say hi. Hi. And uh, I, let me start by saying how much I love you guys show first. Oh, oh thank thanks, you. Jay. Did you get us five stars, you piece of shit? <laughs> yeah, I don't do ratings. You'll Come just hear on. from me right now. <laughs> that episode about the Tinder guys had me in tears while I was at work. So. Oh my God. Us <laughs> that too. was pretty funny. I must have listened to that twice. I, I was the rolling. part where the guy where the guy started eating his own straw talking to her. I, I, <laughs> That's I some lost serial it. killer shit right there. Yeah, that guy but was straight with, serial killer. Without a doubt, we'll be talking about this guy 30 years from now. I'm convinced. Yo, my favorite part of that episode was when Rachel was like, when the guy put it in dry and she goes, ow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he's yeah. like, he's like, I love fucking you. And she goes, I hate you fucking me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was awesome. That was really, really funny. Yeah, no, the cop killer funny. is definitely going to be on some documentary like future from now. And she's going to be like, that's the guy from the bar. Yep. I, I can't believe, like, more cops have not been apprehended for being killers because it's so easy for them to get away with shit. Well, because they, are they so can protected. get away with it. Right. They have the power to cover anything up they want. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love the show. So I, I love being on and let's, let's go. I don't know. Whatever you guys want to talk about first. Well, Jay, it's your show. Take it away. Not my show, but I, I want to talk about <laughs> Richard Ramirez first because I, yes. you guys watched the Night Stalker documentary on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, that was really good. And for anyone like, who hasn't watched it, watch check it. that shit out. Yeah, it's it, it was good. I didn't find it scary. I did. My cousin loved, was like terrified about it. I loved how like it was from the perspective of the two detectives who were trying to like catch this guy because there was so much pressure on him. Right. Every day they woke up, there was two different people dead, an entire family slaughtered. Like there was no holes barred with this guy. He would prop open a window and just raise complete hell. Like, yeah, that's, that's you know, he, he, the scary part of it. Like it was like random homes and all they had right, was a like, sneaker print. Yeah. They had no motive. They didn't know why he was doing what he was doing. Yeah. Like he was gouging people's eyes out or he would rape somebody and tie them up and leave them alive. And they still couldn't ID this guy. Like yeah. he was totally, totally random. Well, usually and, they're able to profile the person. So based off the crimes, but this was just so fucking random. Everything he did. Yeah. No, he would yeah. like, walk through a town, like open a fucking window at midnight when people are sleeping and like be in your room. Yeah. Like, and it was, it wasn't like one area. He drove all over Southern California, just, so you never knew where he was going to be next. The cops were like super confused. 
they didn't know there were other departments getting involved. Like, no, no way it could be him because this is a totally different crime. So then they thought they had more than one killer going. And the one thing I don't understand, I still can't wrap my head around it as crazy of a fuck as this guy was. Why are you raping 85 year old women, bro? How, like it's gotta be dry in there, man. Dry. They're half dead. Oh my God. And she was an invalid. One of them. So she wasn't even mobile. Like, Oh that my poor God. Well, that's like necrophilia kind of. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he's drawing, uh, what was it? He went to the, her makeup, took her lipstick and wrote, um, he drew a pentagram with red lipstick on her leg. So then the cops were like, Oh, it's a satanic cult. So everything he did threw them off. It, it was so random. And then he got into, uh, uh, breaking into children's homes, kidnapping them, molesting them, and then he would bring them back home. Yeah, that part. Made remember me that sick. one girl? Yeah, yeah, that one girl that was interviewed said like she remembered him propping open her screen, coming in, comforting her like he was kind to her. She trusted him. He got her into the car and then drove her to this like dingy ass apartment and molested her. I didn't he keep her there for more than one day. It, it was like a couple of days, and her parents thought she was gone. Yeah. And then he just brought her back like it was nothing. Like, dropped her off, like, okay, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for your time. Yeah, and, like, like, but she was one of the survivors. Like, for her to be able to talk about it is crazy because this guy was fucking psycho. Yeah. He was so psycho. Like, and I, I was heartbroken um, that one old woman, she like fought him. Oh, that I had to shut it off for a little bit after that. When they showed her like dead on the floor yeah. and stuff, I was like, nope. Because honestly, like living alone, I was freaking myself out. And I don't freak out ever. I don't know how that like didn't that. freak me out at all. And I live alone too. I was like, oh my God. I also no, have a it, serial it, killer it, living behind yeah, me. Yeah, your neighbor. Yeah, well, let's not even get into that. I mean, he's probably <laughs> looking in your window right now. We shut we the speak. blinds because we saw him outside with binoculars. I would love before. to be involved in a podcast. Can I come in? <laughs> I, I do truly... laundry. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the laundry in the basement right now, and he's talking about him. He's Stan. He waits in her closet for her. Guys, oh, I'm gonna my... freak out tonight. <laughs> no, but like I get that. The reason before we go to bed when we lock our doors is because we've seen that people like Richard Ramirez exist. They're real. They're real. Whether we want to believe it or not, like there are a lot of crazy fucking people out there. I check my closet every single night when I get home. Is that weird? No, the closet thing never bothered me. Honestly, it was always just like the darkness, the darkness of your yard. Like I make sure all my lights on my house are on outside at night because like this fucking guy, the darkness kept him going. Yeah. Yep. People never saw it coming, you know? And like, um, I'm trying to think back to when he like stomped that old lady out, like it's horrible. And then his kids have to go try to identify her, but the cops couldn't even recognize her face because of what he did to her. Right. You know what I mean? But she beat the fuck out of him. That old lady held her ground. She stood her ground. And she was like this little thing. Like, And that's you probably why she ended that. up killed, too. Because, right. honestly, I don't know. In some situations, yeah, it's good to fight back. But what if it's not? Because what if he would have left her and just raped her? Like some of the I other people. No, I'd dead. fight fucking tooth and nail to the end. Because then you're like grossed out and you have that mental image and you're never going to heal. That's true. Being right. Like well, somebody came in my house, raped me. My, I would, n I would never mentally heal from that. I'd rather just die. I'd fight that motherfucker tooth and nail. That's true. Yeah. I, you say that now, but your, your instincts kick in at that point. You, it's either you or him. Yeah. Right. Like, no, yeah, I'd you might him. be damaged after you're going to need a lot of fucking therapy. I'm sure. But like you survived, somebody like that that's an amazing feat what? and i read the book recently there were some people where he he bound this one woman tied her up tortured her he asked her if anybody else was in the house she told him her 11 year old son was in his bed what? he went into the son's room woke him up tied him up and put him in the fucking hall closet raped his mother all night and then had the balls to untie her and say, 
if you say anything, I'll come back and kill you. Where's the L.A. freeway? I don't know how to get out of here. Why would the fucking mom say somebody else is in the home? I'd be like, no, I live alone. Just kill me and go. I I don't know. Maybe she's in a panic, but, you know, you're not thinking clearly at that point. There's a fucking guy in there holding you at knife point, you know? She was probably saying, like, he's home. Please don't hurt him. Begging. And he did. He let her live. And then he has the balls to ask her for directions after he sodomized her. Oh, my her God. Home. That's disgusting. I would have been like, find it yourself, asshole. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm kidding. It's you like know, you have a small wiener. The grossest part about that, for some reason, wasn't even the killings for me. It was how everybody was, like, complaining about his bad breath. It, not even his breath. <laughs> his body odor. One woman compared him. <laughs> she compared him. To, like, we've all been to fucking petting zoos when we were little, right? <laughs> yeah, he and recently. <laughs> he would smell like a goat pen. What the fuck are you doing that you smell that bad, bro? Yeah, you do not shower at all, ever. Like, the the teeth, I think it was the bad breath and the teeth that got me well, the most. Yeah, his teeth were rotting because he was a crackhead and, like, a coke addict. So, he was just, like, all fucked up and he would use these drugs to fuel him. And then... I think at one point he blamed ACDC, the band, for like... Give me a break. The reason... Yeah, uh, all right, yeah. There's always got to be somebody like, yeah, their music spoke to me. Well, he was a Satanist, and he believed that their music spoke to him, and it fueled him. So he would drive around all night cranked up looking for women or anybody to kill. Well, that makes sense why it was so erratic, like his behaviors, because he was probably half the time like in a drug-induced haze. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought the most amazing thing of that entire investigation was the fact that he was wearing rare shoes, those avian oh, sneakers. Oh, those fucking shoes were yep. the yeah. one piece that they had, that shoe, the sneaker print, were the one piece of evidence that they had. Yeah, and he, he attempted to break into a cop's home. Do you remember that part? Yeah. yeah. The, he, I think the, the cop was asleep on the couch, and his wife heard the window. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. She, yeah, and she got up and she was like, whatever the fucking guy's name was, I, I can't remember. And she was like, did you open a window? And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? No. She's like, the dining room window is open. He goes outside with his flashlight and sees the shoe print, and he's smart enough to fucking preserve it. Like, he put something over it and called the cops. So when they came, those detectives that were looking into it, like, here's that fucking shoe print again. Right. And they realized it was one guy because... All his entrances were from outside, and I think they said that shoe at the time was so rare, there were six pairs sold or five pairs sold in that area, like the West Coast. Five of them went to Arizona. One went to Southern California. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. But then they couldn't track it back. So they were literally back. looking for one, that one pair of shoes. Yep. I mean, what are the odds of that? That it's not like a Nike or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they went... They went to uh, what? Do they even sell avias anymore? Like, do they make them? I don't know. No, no, but like, it was super rare. So the fact that that's what kind of fucked him. He he got reckless. Like, I think he thought he was never going to be stopped. And it never all stems from wasn't he abused as a kid? So this is what fascinates me about all the serial killers. Is I feel like eighty something percent of them were abused as kids yeah didn't his yep. dad his dad beat him growing up right his, his dad was extremely violent at home i don't think it was towards him or his siblings but i'm pretty sure he had seen his mom attacked by his dad yeah and um you know he was an outcast at school yep there were students that went to school with him that, like he was very quiet very reserved didn't say much and then well because he smelled he, like a fucking goat <laughs> right, like who the, the fuck is gonna talk to a class. kid? Yeah, who's gonna talk to a kid that smells like a fucking goat? Number and one, so oh, that's <laughs> yeah. And um, he became friends with his cousin. Uh, his cousin was kind of like taking him under his wing, and he fought in Vietnam. And he had taken pictures of women he had raped and killed in Vietnam. Ugh! Oh my god! So he was showing this kid these violent images from the time I think he was like thirteen. So. Okay, he's got an abusive father. Now he's becoming friends with his psychopath cousin who's showing him all these disgusting things. And then his cousin shot his fiance in front of him while he was on the couch. Right, right, right. In the head. And I'm pretty sure she survived or 
I think she survived, but like, this is all this kid knew. So you add that with a drug habit and he's got nothing fucking better to do. I don't even think he worked. He was just living off the money he robbed from houses and jewelry. So, I mean, that's a bad combination. You're going to be a bad seed, but people like him are just, they're extremely rare. He was on death row, right? Is he dead or is he alive still in jail? Yeah, he was on death row in um, in California. Um, uh, what prison was he in? San Quentin. He was supposed to get the gas chamber. He died before he could. I think he was on death row for like 20 years. Whoa. And he had cancer and he died. So he got it fucking easy. And the craziest part, not the craziest part, but to me this is like so wild that then like he has all these women fans, even I knowing can't. that he smells like a billy goat and he's got <laughs> bad breath. Forget the fucking smell, okay? Like, imagine <laughs> these, like, all right, yeah, the guy smells like a goat. He's got rotten teeth. There, <laughs> there you know, there are worse people out there. I'm just, no, they're, they don't get as bad as him. Forget his fucking smell. Think about what he did. Now, you have all these nice men out there who buy you flowers, take you out. You we know, don't like those all these men. fancy fucking dinners. They couldn't get laid in a strip club with a $100 bill tape to their dick. This guy <laughs> slaughtered. Slaughtered women, <laughs> raped them, and he's got lines of women fucking ready to go bone him in prison. I don't even understand. Even though he it. smells like a billy goat. <laughs> right. But even, yeah, he's disgusting. And you saw, I know you saw those mug shots of him the at teeth. the end of the documentary. His teeth. But yeah. he looks like a fucking demon. He doesn't even look human. Well, that's what they say. The eyes. When you saw him, he had no soul in no his expression. eyes. Like I've, a great white yeah. fucking shark. I've yeah. met people like that where you look in their eyes and like it takes my breath away because I'm like, like they have a demonic soul. I don't know if you guys have ever met anybody like that where you look in their eyes and you're like, they're... They're not fully human. They're demonic. I've met I've two seen people like that. People go into a rage before no. and get that look in their eyes. Like their eyes turned black. Yeah. It's really yeah, bad. It's like a shark. It's like you're looking yep. into the eyes of a shark. Yep. And yeah, you know scary. there's no emotion. No. A there's shark nothing that there. smells like a goat in his case. But <laughs> like um <laughs> when it came to that part, I I like paused it for a minute and I was like I can't even believe how fucking evil this guy looks. Yeah. It looks fake. Like, I was watching it by myself, and I I'm, I'm, don't usually get, like, the chills when I watch these things because I'm so used to them, but that one mugshot really disturbed me. I'm like, I can totally see how that man is capable of doing that shit. Well, they have no soul. They're demonic. But in the eyes, right. it's, like, scary. Yeah, they're just almost not human. You it, know? There's definitely something off with their brains. Well, I mean, obviously, obviously, but they've done like scans on the brains of psychopaths and the brains on regular people, and they're different. Their brain is wired completely different. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I do believe sometimes you are born a normal person and your upbringing and people influence you. Like certain people influence you to become evil. I yeah. think something changes in them. Well, I think trauma and, rewires your brain regardless of what it is. Absolutely. Like pe- people with PTSD have their brains differently. They show different on the scan than than people without PTSD. I, yeah, I, I mean, there are war heroes that, you know, there are war heroes that, you know, went and fought for this country and they were normal kids going to fight overseas. And they come home and they kill their wives. They kill themselves. Right. I mean, so crazy. I remember seeing um, a story, a cop in Michigan pulled this guy over for no taillight. And he happened to be a Vietnam vet. And he just got out of the truck before the cop could even approach and shot the cop to death. Yeah. You know? Snap. And it definitely had to do with shit he saw. He was crazy. Yeah. That's so that's what I mean. Like, Richard Ramirez could have been a really fucking nice guy. He could have been a smelly stockbroker for all we know yep you know but you know he his best friend was an evil person and his father was mean and i think he just shut off all of his emotions and it made him crazy yeah i think a lot of these were like who is the psycho guy like he was molested as a kid too right am i making that up the one that psycho is based off of oh uh norman bates yeah wasn't he Um, oh ed gein yeah he was based off of 
a lot of different people, I want to say. But yeah, Ed Gein had a very weird relationship with his mom. Right. So did Dahmer, though, I, I believe. Yeah. Well, Dahmer, Dahmer was fucked up because his parents divorced at a young age. And I think his mom had left them. It was like him and his dad. The mom and, like, was his, like having an affair, I think. Because yep, in My yep. Friend Dahmer, like when it shows him in high school, like when he started like collecting the roadkill, dis, uh, what do you call that? Dissecting them in his little shed. That's when you know you're fucked up when your kid brings home like dead animals or starts killing animals. Well, his dad... Jay, correct me if I'm wrong. The dad worked as some sort of like scientist or in a lab or something. Yep. And he yep. kind of like would bring things home and show him and whatever. And then it became like an obsession with the, the dad, the, with the kid. Yeah. yeah. So then he would like yep. be riding the bus and see like roadkill on the road and then like go back after he got home and like scoop it up. And then the dad was like, wait, this is like getting to the point of like not normal wait. and like trash to shed. My ex's weird aunt did that. <laughs> <laughs> like she wait. had an art studio of like all roadkill. Did she do taxidermy though? No. It what? was very like she put it, but she had OCD really bad where she wouldn't like like my ex moved in with her for a time period and she would like stayed outside and all of the stuff that he brought in she like lysoled and hired cleaners to clean his shoes suitcase lamps like everything but before. you're bringing roadkill she would bring roadkill like she'd find a dead frog on the side of the road and then like like f put it in her freezer like it was very strange uh, yo that's funny you say that because you know when i first started at my job like we're responsible for picking up roadkill too if people don't want to do it yeah. like we have to go do this and yeah it sounds like a great fucking job but anyway um she Someone's had a dead squirrel do it, in front of her house <laughs> yeah and like when we came there to come get it she was in tears like mourning the loss of this fucking squirrel in the street like she knew it and she was like, don't pick it up. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to have it stuffed. And we're going to put him in my living room. What? I got the fuck out of there real quick. That's so weird. Like, okay. It's all you now. People have very, very fucking strange. I, I don't even know if you could call that a fetish. Would you? No, I, I mean, if you fuck it, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, if, Furry. Keep it, Furries. if you fuck it, <laughs> yeah. if you fuck the dead squirrel in the street, it's a fetish. But hey, it probably wouldn't be the first person or the last. No, definitely not. And I think Dahmer did shit like that. I don't even think it came. It, it was just about dissecting. He was obsessed with anatomy because when he started, like, kidnapping his victims, you know, he would experiment with them. And sometimes they were still alive. Like. Pouring acid in their brains. Are you what? fucking What? Yes. Oh, yeah. He did shit like that. He would get drunk, like, saw the top of their head off so their brains were exposed and pour acid in them and watch them, like, die. Oh, because you don't die God. immediately after you get scalped. You, no. like, live for, like, a no. little while, yep. right? Yes. And I think he had a very fucking strange obsession with anatomy and like you know I, I i remember stories of him like dissecting people and keeping their like he would harvest their organs and keep them in his freezer in his refrigerator because he and his excuse was oh, i never wanted them to not be with me. like couldn't you just simply ask the guy to sleep over did you have to cut him open and rip his liver out and put it in the freezer well, maybe uh, the guy was breaking up with him, so that was his revenge. <laughs> but there was no breaking up. Everything was like a one-night stand with him. He would go to gay bars and right. bring guys home. He got, and... like, prostitutes and stuff, too, or no? Did well, I, I read that, I thought. Maybe male prostitutes. Yeah, he yeah was... no, he was. I know he was gay, and he started yeah. at a very young age. And I remember, like, his aunt. Didn't he move in with his aunt? And his yes, aunt like a great found aunt. a body or something like that, or like smelt something, like smelt because yes. he had the body in his fucking house. And his aunt yeah, he was stashing his bodies in a crawl space or the basement, and she was complaining about a smell. Yes, but she was like this old ass lady, so and she he wasn't was investigating. Young. Wasn't he like sixteen years old at the time when he had his first victim? Yeah, and I think, I think like it disturbed him for a long time, and then he's he just stopped. like it became he didn't a do fucking. It for like seven yeah. years after that, right? Yeah, he stopped and then like he was going to school, but he was like a serious alcoholic. And I think he, he had said in interviews, the only, 
the only time he would commit those murders was when he was severely drunk because it was the only way he could handle the smell. That's what he said Ugh. when he was like cutting these people apart. Not because he felt bad, just because just because of the smell. smell. Good thing right. he wasn't like, in the I'm cell with Richard Ramirez. It. Yeah, him and the Billy yeah. Goat wouldn't yeah. be friends. <laughs> right, like I was first watching it, I'm like, okay, he drank because it, you know, it was tough on him to do that, like it would be on anybody else. But no, he didn't like the smell, so when he was drunk, it was easier for him to do it. Oh, how many people but, did he kill? Dama, I want to say like 19 when he got caught, That's maybe. Jesus. And they I were all say, his male sex high. victims, right? Like, they were all, like, men that he brought home to fuck. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, he got caught because one of them got away before he could do anything and, like, ran out of his apartment. I think he tried chasing the kid, and then he gave up. And the kid got into the street, and he was naked and had, like, a handcuff on him or something. Yeah, yeah. But then I thought that... I thought the police gave it back, the guy back to Dahmer. I thought what? Maybe that's just no. in the movie because he ran. I don't know. Cut this part out, then. Yeah. No, you might be right. Now, now you got me second guessing. But I'm pretty sure he was like this guy Jeffrey. He tried to fucking kill me. You got to go up there, and the cops were like, "All right," and they went up there and. They searched the apartment and they opened the freezer and they found a fucking severed head. <laughs> oh, and somebody's dick. Somebody's dick was in the freezer, too. Like, that's a fucking souvenir if I've ever heard of a souvenir. <laughs> right? Like, imagine you don't even realize who this guy is. You're over there hanging out and you're like, I'm going to grab a fucking Gilios out of the freezer and there's a cock in the There's bag. a big wiener. Like, at least Dexter had, like, his blood slides. Like, yo, this guy saves a whole dick. <laughs> Maybe it was right. the best he ever had. Honestly, Christ, yeah. don't fault the man. It could have been the best dick he's ever had in his life. It was his trophy cock, definitely. <laughs> Did he still blow it? <laughs> oh, God, he might have. Like, he made it into oh. a flute. <laughs> like boop, a popsicle. Boop, boop. A little clarinet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, it's just so hard to fathom people being able to do that to other people. Like, And I don't even feel like his upbringing was that terrible like your parents got divorced okay so did mine i never thought about uh, i feel that. like 80 percent of the world's fucking parents got divorced yeah right and i i don't know it could have been a feeling of abandonment by his mom or i think it was the gay thing too a lot of times the gay thing ties into the way these guys end up like they're closeted they're ashamed i, I don't know because Same it was like so long, long, kind of, yeah it was so long ago that it was not Accepted. accepted to be gay back then where now it's it's you know nobody gives a shit but like back then when when w was he born like 50, 60 something 60, i want to yeah, say 50, 60 something like that so it was it was not okay back then really yeah, i mean you watch his interviews too like you would never think this guy was capable like he's this fucking dork with blonde hair these big thick like coke bottle glasses he's got such a calm demeanor and You'd never think if you saw him in a store, like he slaughters men and his, harvests their body parts and keeps them in their fr in his freezer. His demeanor was like disturbingly calm. calm. He was awkward, right? In like, interviews, I was like, the way he's talking about it, it's like, oh, I went to the deli and got a sandwich. Mm -hmm. And he's mm -hmm. talking about like slaughtering people. Yeah, he'd be like, uh, well, I would take the top of their skull off and pour acid down and watch them die, and then I'd cut them apart and put them in my fridge. And you're like, oh, okay, no big deal, Jeff. <laughs> Standard everyday practice. Right, and that's what I find like so fascinating about these people is they could be your fucking next-door neighbor. You never know. I know. I'm telling you. It could well, be Dr. Lecter. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely Lecter? your neighbor. Well, it's, it's even in the book I'm reading, like, again, I'm only like 20 pages in, but the guy was saying that he, before he even wrote the book and started doing this, he had come across, like, four serial killers in his life. Like, he bumped into one in an elevator. The guy, like, looked at him. They, like, said hi. He got hit in the leg with a fucking bag. And he realized, like, later on, like, you know, a week later after seeing the 
the news, the newspaper, that there was a fucking body in the bag, but it was not the full body. It was like the head, the arms, the legs, the torso was left upstairs in the motel. And the guy literally like bumped into him after just slaughtering these prostitutes in the fucking hotel. And it was just like an everyday occurrence. Like you bump into somebody in an elevator. All right. And then, like, he ran into somebody else in Moscow. He had a normal conversation with them about film. And then, like, they were talking about, they were in, like, a Moscow film festival together. And then, like, you know, maybe a year later, he sees that the guy's on the news for, like, killing, like, 25 people in Moscow. Like, crazy shit. It's bizarre. It's just your everyday. But, like, some people, you're like, that guy's a serial killer. Like, you know. But then some people, it's just, like, your everyday run-of-the-mill people that, like, you go to, like fucking lunch with or the gym yeah like we joke around where you know you meet somebody strange and awkward and you you laugh with your friends like oh he's definitely a serial killer and he's probably not and then you meet a guy that's completely normal will smile on your face have a great conversation and it's like they're they're just two people but they're able to like you know they're like chameleons they blend in with their environment yeah well even like bundy everybody was like he was so handsome he even was though married. he wasn't no i didn't think he was good looking and this I, dude must I have had know. like a golden dick or something because he's another one that the women were like flocking to his court appearances just to see him yeah they thought he was so hot he's not my yeah. type but like they he was he was married didn't he have a kid or was it her kid I'm not sure. See, I'm not familiar with Bundy like that, but I just don't understand it. They they know what he did. They know what he's capable of doing. Like, you can love him all you want. If you ran into him in a park at the, at, at night when you're jogging, he's going to put a fucking rope around your throat and drag you into the woods and slaughter you. Right, right. You know but, what I mean? But then I, they get married in jail. It boggles my mind. He would kill you. And you're obsessed with this guy. I think he got married in jail. I might be wrong, but I think he got married in jail to one of his fans. He did. And um, what he blamed his killings on pornography. I watch a lot of fucking Pornhub and I have never murdered anybody. That's what I'm saying. Like, how is a pair of tits and ass going to set you over the edge to go wrap a a rope around somebody's throat and strangle them? I just don't understand that. I, I, their brains are different than ours, though. Yeah. Like, what we perceive is a lot different than what he perceived, probably. But I I guess he figured it was all his for the taking. I, I don't know. I can't tell you because I don't think that way. But also he was like charming men too because they left him alone in the fucking courthouse to work on his case or whatever the frig it was. And he jumped out the window and then went and killed the sorority house worth of girls or whatever it was. Yeah. So everybody was was fooled by this guy. Yep. I think people had a hard time believing like this. I, I don't even want to say good looking because he just looked like a dork to me. He but was like, not good looking to me, but he's not my type. Yeah, like he was a suave, I guess, charismatic, probably had an amazing way with words because he was super intelligent. I mean, the guy was a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he defended himself, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't do a very yeah. good job, though. <laughs> so he knew he knew what to say. Yeah. I mean, that was a complete joke. The judge was like, yeah, uh, you're still guilty. Goodbye. But I don't know. He just knew what to say to people. And that's the scary thing about these guys is they they are that good, you know. Yeah, we've they can probably make dated you believe. I probably have dated some. Who's that? Who no, dated you? Me and you Alex, dated we probably have. Oh, I've yeah. dated a sociopath before. I don't think yeah. he had the fucking heart to kill anybody, but. Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, you run into crazies throughout your life, but you know, if you saw them on the fucking evening news being taken out in a you know, orange jumpsuit and handcuffs because they killed 50 people, you'd be shocked. Right. You know, like, My yeah, life, I, I probably wouldn't people. be. I'd be like, well, that's expected. Disappointed, <laughs> but not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. my ex. No. <laughs> no, I guess. But, you know, and then, like, then you look at a guy like John Wayne Gacy, who had a family, was, a, like, a politician, a contractor. He... Uh, who was the, uh, it was a president, he had shown up to a, like a Republican or a Democratic convention, and yeah, it was uh, Ford's wife, or Rosalind Carter, Jimmy Carter's wife. He was in pictures with like the first family. Like these people thought he was like 
the greatest thing ever. He was rubbing elbows with fame, with, with rich, powerful people. And then they all found out like, yeah, um, he killed like 36 guys and buried them in his fucking basement. So, <laughs> like, And wasn't like, he the clown imagine? at kids' birthday parties? Yes. He dressed yep. up as a fucking clown, which is Pogo. terrifying That's in itself. That's the best part. That's the best he part. He called himself Pogo. No, there are better things. He was like the cook in jail, and the prisoners were on the news raving about how good of like a fucking turkey stew the guy made around Thanksgiving. Like, Listen, Thanksgiving's yeah, the guy a popular time in jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. But, every, you know, his family was committing like, no, no, he's not a homosexual because um, – before he was ever convicted of all those murders, like he invited a neighborhood friend's kid into his basement and made him watch like gay pornography. <gasps> That's and, so gross to me. Yeah. The kid was like 15 and he like forced the kid to give him oral sex. And then the kid ratted on him. He went to jail, but he got out on good behavior. So, you know, his sister was in denial. Like, no, he's not gay. That's, that kid lied, you know, then they were saying because he had made good money that they were trying to like, you know, basically get money out of him, pay off the family and we'll drop the charges. That's what he was telling people. So everybody thought he got framed and he went to jail and he got out. And, oh, this poor man, this poor guy, like this kid lied. Nope. Nope. That was just the fucking beginning. Then when he got out of jail, he started killing people. Yeah. And, and I think you learn a lot of tricks in jail too. I'm sure. And he, he probably was probably made... in there stewing, not making stew, but stewing that he was <laughs> yeah. so pissed that he got caught this time. And now he was like coming out with a vengeance. I don't know. Yep. His, yeah, his rage derived from the fact that, again, he grew up with a very mean father. And he was, I guess he was feminine as a kid because, you know, all the other kids in the neighborhood are playing sports and he wanted to be inside with his sister and his mom cooking and baking and sewing like, okay, ding, ding, ding. He's gay. Let's just get that out there now. But the father like wouldn't have it. He would beat him with a belt when he came home from work. Then he would get drunk, come up from the basement, beat him at the dinner table in front of his family. So he was a closeted homosexual. He was afraid to be gay because his father hated it. And I think all that repressed rage against his father is the reason he did what he did to these guys. Yeah. Like he took it out on them. You know what? I mean, I don't get that at all, but there's somebody that we worked with who didn't, he never, obviously he, he didn't kill anybody, but that, right. we, know of. that we know of, Just but kidding. he has such anger against his mom because his mom, when he was growing up, stole like $40,000 of his money because he got hit by a car. He got hit. He had, Something he in a car like accident that. And he got like a settlement. So his mom stole $40,000 of his money, smoked crack with it, like really like fucked him up. And now he has no respect towards women, period. He ruins every relationship with them. He hate fucks them. Yep. Like he, you know... Like, and he tells us thinking it's funny and yeah. it's just like, it's kind of disturbing. Therapy. Yeah. Like he thinks that women are just like meaningless holes and he will never have a fucking relationship in his life all because of the hate that he has for his mother. He doesn't kill yeah. them, but he ruins them mentally. Like he will, you know, form relationships with them and then break them down. Yeah. And then it's, ba it's bad. It's really, it's like sad for him and for everybody that he's with. Well, yeah. And that's because he feels like that's what his mom did to him. So for the rest of his life, he's going to take it out on whatever woman women. he ends up with. All women. I dated somebody that did that. Yeah. That was like that. Yeah. His mom was like an alcoholic and he resented that a lot. And then every time we were out drinking, having a good time, I got the brunt of the hatred for the mother to the point of like, there you couldn't even have a relationship with the person mm -hmm. anymore because why the hell are you taking this out on me? Yeah, it's, let me tell you, mommy issues are very dangerous with men. Yeah. Yep. They're really, They're really very, bad. very dangerous. And I'm speaking as a guy that kind of has mommy issues. I've never killed anybody, I promise. But like, when you feel some kind of disconnect from your mother, <clears throat> it can make you like 
bad at relationships. Like you have to learn how to be good at them because there are so many underlying issues that you might not even be thinking about at that time, but it's the cause for your flaws. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, it's, there's it's a lot of like things that go into thing. Yeah, it can be. Or you can get people like John Wayne Gacy who constantly harp on his hatred for his father. So instead of going to therapy like a normal person would to sort out his differences <laughs> with the world, he's going to kidnap an innocent teenage boy and slaughter him and bury him in his crawl space. And I just watched a documentary on him. It wasn't really on him, but it was about... So he had 33 victims and then eight were unidentified or it was 33 identified and then eight more that were unidentified. And um, I guess kind of recently they started, to, they like reopened the case. Not that they ever closed it because the victims were unidentified, but they re-looked into it and they made a website for people who thought that their loved one could have been a victim. Yeah. So these people went on the website, put where they were living, their the description of the person, uh, you know, whatever. Because these this, these families just thought that they disappeared off the face of the earth, basically. So crazy. And they, sure enough, now that dental records are a thing and oh. all that, and the DNA stuff is a thing. Yeah, they they figured out who a bunch of these guys were now out of the eight. Yeah, yeah. He he got Little caught with thirty three, but there's no doubt there were more. Why you know, the fuck somebody would you like put them, them in they your don't crawl space? Stop. They are fueled. They they can't stop what they're doing. Like they don't stop until they're caught. There is no okay. I'm gonna kill 33 people and then I'm gonna retire. Like it's not a fucking career. You know what I mean? Right. It, he never would have stopped. He was so enraged and angry, and all those repressed feelings made him an evil person. And his family still couldn't. His mom denied it to the day she died. Like, there's no way my son did this. Somebody framed him. Well, it, like, okay. fuels their soul to do this, too. It's a compulsion, right. I think. Yeah, and then they, like, it's... finally, like, get their fix, and then they're good for a little bit. Yeah, unless you're Richard it's... Ramirez, who was just, like, just going out every fucking night. I don't know. Yeah, he was one of a kind, because he just, it was anybody and everything in his fucking way. You know, I think they get like, bored. Like uh, in the book American Psycho, like he would just like be bored and then he would just like go and fucking murder a prostitute. Like right. he'd be like, you know, itching for it. Like and then he would get his fix and then he'd be like, OK, you know, good. Yeah, for a it's like bit. rubbing one out. It's yep. like rubbing one out for them. Yep. <laughs> no, <laughs> you would know. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, yeah, you know, instead of a guy being like, oh, man, I just really need to jerk off and I'll feel better. He. He's like, I just need to go out and kill somebody and it'll go away for a little while. <laughs> you know, I, it, that's what's so, it's just so hard to believe. But these people are among us, you know, they're everywhere. There are people everywhere. that haven't been caught. They're still out there and oh, you'll yeah. never know. Who, but like, I, I found it amazing that Gacy had the balls to invite the cops who were investigating him in for dinner. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, he he was... invited the two detectives in for a fucking fish dinner. He cooked for them. And one of the detectives was sitting at his kitchen table and he was like, there's a fucking foul smell in this house. Like something is off. So this idiot was under investigation and was so narcissistic that he thought he could invite them in and charm them. All right, well, he better fish. So we're going to stop looking into this guy. Like, no. Well, he now probably cooked fish to mask the house. smell. Dude, why would right. you keep your bodies in your crawl space? That's what I don't get. I Like, if I were to do this, I would not keep them in my fucking home. Uh, they don't care. I mean, they have the fucking balls to kill people as it is. So what is it to them to put them in the crawl space? You true, know? true. And plus, it's easier for him. He doesn't have to go dragging a dead body into his trunk and make it disappear. It never left the house. True. And like you said about the he's narcissistic, I think that all of these guys, well, most of them have like narcissistic traits. I'll never get caught. Yeah. They'll never think it's me. And then they start right. leaving like clues too as like a game. Right. Yeah. And that's why he tried to blend in with society as best he could. You know, he's getting involved in politics and um, 
he was like a big time contractor where he was. So everybody trusted him and that's what they do. They establish trust, you know, like BTK was a fucking member of his church. Wasn't he a deacon? Something like that. Yeah. Like they, they, they will do anything to like blend in with society. Nobody will ever think it's me. Nobody will ever think it's me. Right. I, I don't know. think, it, is it Gein or Gein? Gein? Gein. Gein. I think Gein with the fucking, that's the one that put the skin, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. he was exhuming bodies. Yeah. And then and out of the cemetery. And he would make like fucking lamps and shit out of their skin. Like, yo, that's some ballsy shit because the evidence is right on your fucking chandelier. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Like the cops come, well, we're looking into the district. Oh, yeah, come on in. Um, yeah, like sir, my What fo- is this lampshade made out of? <laughs> what? Taxidermy. Yeah, um, that, that's a body that I dug up in the graveyard. Um, her thigh, I believe. That's what that, that is. That is so disgusting. Like yeah, turning but he on your fucking lamp and it's like somebody's skin flaps. <laughs> well, he dug up his own mom, didn't he? Yeah, yeah there was something weird yeah. with the mom. Yeah, he was. She raised him. She taught him. So he never went to school. He was a recluse. She taught him. She read to him the Bible. Hey, here we go. Now the fucking religious fanatic, crazy mom made him a fucking nut job. And um, when she died, he went like crazy because that was all he knew. That was his only companion. The Bible. So or the, the mom. mom. The mom. The mom. Like she and she was like supposedly very strict, which is why like Norman Bates is kind of based off Ed Gein because he was obsessed with his mom too. Right. But yeah, he went and dug her up and I'm pretty sure he did shit with her body parts too. Well, they're all like into like necrophilia. I feel like half of them. Like, dude, how do you fuck your dead mom, bro? That's like, like really all, gross. And forget that aren't there dead. maggots in her snatch? Yeah. Blech. Wait, and what What was that? There's probably maggots in her snatch at that point. Uh, God, yeah. I mean, uh, I just, I don't get it. I That's don't know if this is like it. an urban legend or this is true, but did you guys ever hear the story about how this woman like fucked a dude and then she got like a weird um, like rash or bites or something like around her vagina. So she went to the doctor and they were like, um, like, what have you been doing recently? And oh she was like, why? And they were like, these are maggots. bites from, yeah, like a maggot or something. And they're like, and they're only found in dead bodies. <gasps> and it turns out yeah. that the dude worked at a funeral home. Oh, yeah. So he was like fucking the corpses and then fucking her. Oh my God. And your vagina can get infested with maggots. Like I saw yeah. this, like, Ew, it was like this weird hospital footage of this woman's vagina that was eroded with maggots. It was disgusting. And they had to do like surgery and get it all out. (laughs) Yo, just just the sight of maggots can make me gag. So like, this is very sensitive right now, but like, (laughs) could could you imagine somebody telling you like, okay, uh, we figured out the problem. You're fucking a guy that's fucking dead people. That is so crazy. I'd rather be told I had AIDS. I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What, what is going through a man's mind where he says, I think it's a good idea to fuck this dead woman. And you're obviously you know? getting pussy if you're getting it from that live person that went to the doctor that had the fucking maggot bite. So it's right. not like you're like some fucking nerd. Yes, you're capable of getting laid. What was the dead body thing about? People have weird fetishes. I would love to, like in Mindhunter, that that show was great. And I want them to oh, go yeah. on the you second know, I wanted, season. I wanted to get into third some season. of that. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to get into some of that because uh, that guy, Ed Kemper, was fucking crazy. Oh, he's you a know nightmare what? too. Yeah, he... He decapitated his mother and skull fucked her. And That's he straight up told so... the FBI agent like he was ordering up lunch. Yep. Like, but like, like, yeah, um, I cut my mom's head off and then <laughs> I fucked her skull. And you can see like the FBI agent is on the verge of tears because he can't believe what he's hearing. 
I just want to get in the mind of them, like how they did on that show. Like, I would love to sit down with them, like just a couple of them, exactly like how they did, interview them, see what they think, see what they say. Like, and they are literally talking to you like it's totally fucking normal. Like, they made fucking dinner and then they like took their wife out to dinner but it's like no i fucking skull fucked my mom like it was like an right. everyday occurrence <laughs> yeah it's like they're giving you a fucking apple pie recipe that's how they <laughs> talk about it <laughs> like it's, it's like nothing to them. dr lecter yeah <laughs> yeah dr lecter yeah yeah dr lecter uh, you do it better than i do you, you sound just like her and that, that kind of ruined the movie for me now because so, I, i'll <laughs> never be able to Dr. Lecter. So, so Dr. Lecter. Alex, when we were in Florida two weeks ago, I gave her um, Silence, of, Silence the of the Lambs. And the whole time she goes, I can't even read this because I keep on thinking Jodie Foster's going, Dr. Lecter. <laughs> yeah, like narrating the novel. So, yes. Oh and her voice is so disturbing. <laughs> so anytime you know, I'd be like, how's your book? She goes, Director, director. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she she won the Academy Award for that movie. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know that that is such a good movie. But yeah, like her voice is totally weird like that. Now, like uh, every time I watch it, forever, <laughs> you're I'm never like, gonna director, unhear it. Director. It's like director, yeah, director. director. <laughs> yeah, what was it? That scene where she first goes to Buffalo Bill's house, like when you realize she's about to nail him, like. She talks weird in that scene, too, you know? <laughs> she talks weird in general. <laughs> she does, but, like, now her lines are never... I'm going to be like, yeah, she didn't deserve the Oscar because if you have to make it, You know? Oh. And his voice, his voice was fucking weird, too, though. <laughs> Wait, do it, Buffalo do it. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. What? Well, when she goes to the door, she's asking him about that first girl that was missing, and he's like... Wait, was she a great big fat person? <laughs> no, like now everybody in that movie except Hannibal. Well, Hannibal talks weird too, but he's fucking awesome. But like, yeah, she. Please she's call a him Dirk Lecter. <laughs> yeah, Dirk Lecter. And that scene where they're talking about how she tried to save that lamb from being slaughtered. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> She, oh man, you guys ruined this movie for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. My brother keeps on sending me Snapchats of him going to watch it. He's like, Dirk, your lecture. <laughs> she really fucking talked like that. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And ruined. she says it like 40,000 times throughout the movie. She's like, hello, Dirk, your lecture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how she says it every time she sees the fucking guy. Yeah. And I never realized it. I've seen that movie like millions of times. And now like every fucking time she'll walk in like, how are you, Dr. Lee? You know? <laughs> it's never going to be the same for you, Jay. No, it's ruined. It's ruined. He's like, hello, Clarice. And she's like, hi, Dr. Lecter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when she goes to see him for the last time, she he has like the... um. Her case file for her, right? Like, he wrote notes in there for her. Yeah. And, like, the uh, the security guards are dragging her away. Like, sorry, man, we got to get you on a plane. And she's like, give me back my case file, Dr. Lecter. <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. I, I never fucking realized it. Now you're never going to unhear it. I feel like no. watching it tonight because it's on Netflix just to hear her. <laughs> Gavin always says screenshots and sends Wait, it, it is? It's on Netflix? Yeah, I'm going to have yeah. to fucking watch this because now I'm, I'm going to have like a Dirk 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 count and I'm going to fucking <laughs> write it down. But can oh, we, we get away from it? a drinking game, even though I don't drink, of how many times she says Dirk 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 Dirk. I'll be in the Dirk hospital. Dirk Dirk. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, now that I think about it, I'm like, I'm going in my head to all the scenes that she's in. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I thought she says his fucking name through the whole movie. <laughs> so I want to talk man. about the Gilgo killer because that is yeah, local man. to us. So that's Long I Island. And it's like, what, 15 fucking minutes away from us? Yeah. Yeah, South Shore. It's right there. It's 15 minutes away from where we are. And Alex and I secretly know who the killer is. 
It was somebody all that right, we let's worked hear with. Your theories first, and then I'll give you mine. So, well, all right, Go wait. Ahead. Let's give for people that aren't from here. Let's give them a little background on it. Yeah. yeah. So we're in Jerk Suffolk. Lecter, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Jodie Foster headed up the investigation and she figured out that it was Jack Lecter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking movie's ruined. It won like eight Oscars and I'll never be able to look at it the same way again. <laughs> God, give the background on it. Wait, the background of the killings or the background of who we know who did it? The killing. Well, the killings. All right, that's, yeah, we that's you, Dirk where, Dirkter. Yeah. Well, you know, we know um, a bunch of hookers disappeared, basically Craigslist women, and their families didn't know where the hell they were. And what was it? How many years after the initial disappearances were these bodies found? I'm not even sure. Like five or six at least yeah and it was like 13 women found right it was a lot of them yeah, yeah and they were all prostitutes yeah, so they were found in like burlap sacks thrown into the marsh um in oak beach and um basically the families had no idea what had happened to these women and all of a sudden all these bodies were turning up and the theories are that there were very powerful people involved even police because there's literally zero evidence. So whoever is involved knows how to cover up a fucking murder. Yeah. You know, they, they know what's going to be looked for and what evidence, you know, will, would be there that would, I guess, get them in trouble. And it's like, there's still no killer named. I mean, come on. In this day and age. I know. I know. And the victims were, you know, they were all prostitutes. They were all, a lot of them ran away from their homes. So them missing is not going to cause up red flags. Like say fucking Alex or I go missing. Like ev- the world's, not the world, but like everybody we know is going to stop and fucking look for us. Maybe we're not. Girls. So annoying. Unless you're <laughs> Craigslist hookers, which I know you're not. We're not. People are going to care. Yeah, people are going to care. Like fucking yeah. Alex's mom would know within five minutes my mom would be you know what i mean yep. where these girls they ran away from home years ago they were they all had drug problems most of them their boyfriends were pimps with drug problems drug dealers they you know they they like disowned their family so if they went missing for two three four weeks people would be like oh they're just on a bender or something right. like we'll that. hear like from her like, again yeah they'll turn up eventually like not yeah, a but it, deal. It's probably things that they've done through their whole life you exactly. know like you know, they, they disappear five, six months at a time and then they come back and they want to sleep home or right. they need money and right. then they get money and they go again. So it's like, oh, here we go again. Right. But, um, so what initially, one of the girls, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say what initially kicked off the search on was this the girl screaming. She got away. Well, not really. Kind of. It was the 911 call. Yeah. So sh- this girl, Shannon Gilbert. Uh, she had like a legit prostitution that she worked for an escort service. She had a driver drive mm-hmm. her out. This is a remote area of Long Island. It's, it's by gated. the beach. It's a gated community yeah. too, pretty much. Yeah, it's a rich area. The fucking elite people live there. Yep. Right. So she takes a call at one of these houses in Oak Beach. She goes, her driver's waiting outside, probably like playing with himself. And all of a sudden he sees her. And hears her come running out of the house screaming, they're trying to kill me, they're trying to kill me. The driver's trying to get her in the car. She's, like, delusional at this point. She won't get in the car. She runs to one of the neighbor's house, bangs on his door. He opens up. She goes running in the house, hiding behind a chair or a table or something. She's saying, they're going to kill me, they're going to kill me. He has no fucking idea what's going on. She runs back out the door, runs into the marsh, her driver's driving around trying to find her. Now it's pitch black. Like there's no street lights there, in that no, area nope. either. You're li- like nope. picture next to a beach. Like there's no street yeah. lights on that road. It's it's private. And it's a marsh and it's the reeds and yep. the weeds and all that crap. So the driver he leaves. He ends up leaving, yeah, because he can't find her. Yep. So when her family hadn't heard from her in a while, because I think she kept in touch with her sisters at least. The mom went to the police and hounded them until they started investigating it. When they did, they uncovered all these bodies in the marsh and the reeds next to it and whatever. First of all, there's a big problem in our justice system. 
If you have to go to the cops and beg them to find somebody that was screaming, they're going to kill me, and then they vanish. And they have a 911 call, and it took them, right. what, two hours yeah, for the two police hours to, get to even there? get out there. Which, okay, not even on the busiest fucking Saturday in July does it take two hours to get there with the bumper to bumper traffic. No. It takes at three o'clock in the morning or whatever to get over that bridge. It should take right. You're 15 the fucking minutes police. max. 15 right. minutes max. Yeah. It's yeah. over one it, fucking bridge. Not even over both the bridges to get there. Just one fucking bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. was And that just goes it, wild. It, it's exactly why there's so many like theories tied into it that think people think law enforcement was involved. How, how could you not think so? Yeah. Well, they you not pushed off the investigation like forever. They're still <laughs> investigating it. I mean... You remember, like, we're all from Long Island. How many times did you look on Google or an update? Oh, new, you know, new evidence found in the Gilgo Beach. And it's nothing. It's like a fucking pearl earring. Yeah. Yeah. Of one of the hookers. I secretly yeah. think I know who it is. And I, from day one, I said, well, I'm not going to say on this because it's just my opinion or whatever. Very high profile guy lives out there. My ex-boyfriend used to live with him. And... This is just my theory. I'm just making this up. But who used to get hookers all the time, smoke crack with them, fuck them in the ass, and then my ex-boyfriend would have to drive them home to the train the next morning. And I was like, oh, my God, it all makes sense. Very high-profile Long Island guy. Yeah. And, you know, when they found these bodies in the um, those burlap sacks, those aren't easy to come by. That's not just something you can go to Home Depot and pick up. Yeah. No, yeah. They, and, they said it's um, very specific to either a nursery, like a plant nursery, yeah. not kids, <laughs> um, or... You put the kids in the burlap sack for time out. <laughs> Director, or, <Yeah. laughs> or like a fi- like fishermen yeah. can have them, stuff like that. But like, it's not, you're not finding that in your fucking garage. No. No, that's something that is ordered in bulk to a company or, you know, somebody, like you said, like a nursery who would use them all the time. And a guy who owns nurseries on Long Island happened to commit suicide when all this evidence started coming out. Right. Oh, I didn't know but that. But I'm telling you, it, it's not just one person. It's not just one person. Because if it was just one person, they would have said, okay, it was him. Goodbye. And- but they, they try to sweep it under the rug. Yep. It's like they don't want names being mentioned. And right. that doctor, who is that high profile doctor that had the house out there too? That like, like well, she was at his house, yeah. Shannon. Yep. And they got rid of all the security camera footage because yep. there was one camera and he's like, Oh no, we don't have the, the footage anymore. Like it just disappeared because he was in control of that. And the yeah, police I mean, commissioner at the time, right? He was the commissioner, Jay? James Burke, yeah. yeah. He was the commissioner of the Suffolk County Police Department. He had been involved in like eternal affairs stuff before for being corrupt and like abusive and you know now we bring in christopher loeb the fucking crackhead who breaks into this guy's police issued suv finds dirty magazine all kinds of sex toys and snuff films yep so people who aren't familiar with snuff films i'm, I'm sure they've heard it on the show um, once or twice but <laughs> that's pornography where people die so there's porn and murder on camera that's a snuff film so for this guy to have that and to be a high yeah that's talking, fucked up that's like the siberian the film shit yeah serbian, like, oh, he, serbian film yeah alex he's the chief by the way not not the commissioner oh, he's the, the chief, chief of my police. bad so no it, i thought the same thing but um so this kid rips all this shit out of his truck and it was in a duffel bag if i'm not mistaken yeah. and you know, the cop finds out they got him in the precinct and he had this kid beat up for it. Like, beat yeah, the they shit threatened out of him. to kill his mother. Yeah. So, OK, obviously this guy's upset about what was found. So now he's nervous. That's why he's acting the way he is, because he didn't want any of that shit being found. And he had a history of being with prostitutes, this cop. Yep. It was known. And he's done jail time. For other shit. I don't know if this yeah. was after, but he's been in jail. He's not the chief no more. No, no. He went he went to jail for like four years because of Corruption this assault on this stuff. kid. 
and something yeah, yeah and like other types of corruption that he was doing so this right. guy's and a like, shady fuck to begin with right and you're the chief of police like you can make anything happen if you don't want something to be Absolutely. discovered or found the amount of strings you can pull the people you know i mean he was appointed by the district attorney at the time i forget his fucking name he he went to jail too recently for corruption but th- this guy oh spoda he appointed him as chief so he's got friends in all the right places where if he doesn't want something to be found and then um when the fbi started investigating didn't he refuse them like no, we have this handled. Yeah. And he had the power to do it because it was his jurisdiction. So why the fuck don't you want this case to be solved, bro? What What are you hiding? Right. You're def- he's definitely tied into it. This is my theory. The doctor, him, maybe the nursery owner. Yeah. Um, all these, like, well-off people. We're having orgies with these prostitutes. Yeah. Shit was getting out of hand. Maybe one of them was killing them. The other ones just knew about it. But I think there was like a ring of people involved. And the chief of police was just able to cover it all up. Yeah. Until the crackhead broke into his car. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, and who would have ever thought that that's how something like that could be exposed this random fucking drug addict is walking down the street and he's oh this is a great car to break into <laughs> he finds all this shit talk about and luck. actually there was a prostitute that had been with james burke and said she felt something was wrong with him because he was extremely rough with her like she felt in danger the whole time like he was into rough sex he was doing drugs this is the fucking chief of police yeah, well, that will. Yeah, that they'll arrest you for that, but you know they can do whatever the fuck they want. Yep. Well, that's how it works. He's got a fucking badge, and he's a powerful person, and you know they feel like they are entitled and they're above the law. Right. And that is exactly why nobody's been named in it. But my theory is as simple as this: it was him, and his buddies helped cover it up. Right. I don't is he think still the in jail or no? He's out. I just think the doctor was in, like Alex said, you know, he hosted the parties and whatever happened, happened, you know, make the body vanish. He, but he didn't had he to do have it. a fucking hospital bed for those people, too, or something like that? Like, didn't he, like, have it in his house? Like, it was like a I doctor don't... bed or something. It was in the video. Nope. They did the Netflix documentary where he actually had the fucking bed in his house. And he was, like, helping them with, like, sprained arms or some some fucking shit like that. Maybe I'm making this up. No, you, you're probably right. And yeah, he's helping them out because they're getting the absolute shit knocked out of them by yeah. these fucking guys. Right. Because, you know, what are fucking prostitutes to, you know, a lot of these crazy fucks. And they're then now you got to corrupt They're not people. people. They're right. disposable. Exactly. And um, all right. So one of the stories that were crazy about this case was some one of the killers or the killer called a victim's parents and was taunting them and they oh, pinged the phone call yep. it was shannon's they, or Sh- shannon's parents right and they, they pinged the phone call to like the a phone in new york house. city no it was in new york city that the phone call came from yeah okay and i think it was like right off of like right near penn station so whoever it was was getting on the train or getting off the train and they, like, taunted them, saying, basically, you'll never find out who it was. And they said the reason they think it was a law enforcement official is because they knew, because of the amount of cell phone traffic in that area, it would be so hard to figure out exactly, like, where the fucking phone call was placed or right. whose phone it was. And he kept it quick. He didn't stay on long. Because they could trace numbers after a certain amount of time. And not only that, it, th- there was a documentary about this whole thing a few years ago, and they were investi- one of the families got an email. They traced the email back to a computer in the fucking Suffolk County Police Department. Oh, shit. Right. Like, come on. The evidence is right the fuck there. You That's know, crazy. My theory is, all right, he served this four years, you know, whatever. He got in trouble for something, and his buddies, like, all thought okay everything's fine they're never gonna find out who it was because 
we all know who it was, or we think we know. So Wait, it was our coworker. It was our coworker, actually. My th- old theories out the door. Alex and I work with this guy, Dan Leeds. We could say his name now because he's dead. Mm. All right. So he died. How did yeah. he die? I don't know. He was a weird weird duck like he lived with his mom in hicksville or levittown he was approximately like 55 years old yeah he was 55 years old he drove a kia soul he did it no but wait here's the best all right he lives with his mom (laughs) kia soul killer and he was literally no wait so like he was our bdc rep at our job and he would like be answering leads at like two o'clock in the morning and like we used to fuck with him like we used to write like bad reviews about him and like put them on his computer but they were like fake bad reviews and then he would go up to the boss like crying like i'm so sorry i'll do better i'll do better and my boss would get pissed like addy you gotta stop fucking fucking with his head and he never knew it was me so then he started showing up i swear on my fucking life and this guy was like very strange he like, was like Dahmer ish like he yes. talk, he was like nerdy like very nerdy he talked like a robot he'd be like hello thank you for calling Kia this is Dan Leeds yeah yep. <laughs> and then uh. and then wait no then he started showing up with scratch marks on his neck I swear to yep. fucking god like claw marks on his neck and it was all around this time back in what 2011 something like that 2011 ish and i remember distinctly he had like like rips in his shirt one day we're like dan what happened to your shirt and he goes oh i don't know uh something and so then like we gave him a fucking so we have a morning meeting every single saturday and one of the guys that i work with gave him a fucking shovel in the fucking morning meeting and they said, no way i swear to god and they're like dan we think you're gonna need this tonight for your fucking killings oh my god I think God. he had you know, sand in the back of his Kia Soul too one day. Didn't he have sand in the something. back of his car? Yeah, there was something. We just, we were like, it's him. It's we him. know it. <laughs> the claw marks on his fucking neck because, yo, this guy is not getting laid <laughs> by a regular person that is like BDSMing him, like at all. Like this guy's very, very strange. Very strange. I mean, yeah, it could very possibly have been him. The key is soul and living with the mom at the age of 55 is a dead giveaway. In my right. Opinion. And then the claw yeah. marks and then the sand in the back of his fucking car because we were like, yeah, and how did he animals. answer the phone? Hey, what did he? What did Hello, he this is Dan Leeds calling. Yeah. <laughs> he was like Mr. Movie phone, like literally. Yeah. yeah. Dan Leeds, would you like, would you to, like to see a private soul? Ride, press one. <laughs> If you would like to watch, you know, it literally, no, literally, like it was totally him. And then we find out like a couple of years ago, ago, yeah, like maybe two years ago that he died because Kia like kept on calling him because he was on like the, the lead list. And I think it was his mom that's like, please stop calling. Dan died. And we're like, she oh. probably killed him. Yeah, she probably killed him. Yeah, but you see what I'm saying? Like, there are people that walk the earth that probably do these things, and they never get caught. It goes to the fucking grave with them. Yeah, and I probably work with half of them at my fucking degenerate job. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it could be, but... <laughs> There's you some fucking weirdos Do you think he was killing can. hookers? Do you think he was killing hookers? It was the claw marks on his neck. Like, they were heavy scratches of... Not, they were like human scratches and this happened multiple weekends in a row and we'd be like we nobody would say anything like dan are you okay and he'd be like oh so yeah. like monday morning he would show up with the claw mark and yeah. he would be like i cut myself shaving yeah what no, the fuck but was, it was he shaving claws. with the tiger claws <laughs> it was literally like women's claw marks not cat claws claw like women's fucking nails and that was not some freaky shit that was like i'm scrambling for my life and clawing your fucking neck yeah i could see him using like chloroform on people definitely right he always gave me the creep yeah he was a creepy creepy guy he was nice like, hey, this he is was, dan lee you know Does what he was very like nice <laughs> 
<laughs> but the shovel, you know? dude, the shovel in the morning meeting, we like close out the meeting and one of the managers at the time, Dave's like, and we need to present our BDC rep with a gift and gave him a fucking shovel. And it was like, have fun this weekend, Dan. And he didn't, he didn't reject the shovel. No, he took the fucking so, shovel. You know, that's another thing right there. <laughs> Imagine he was like, I, I really appreciate the shovel, but do you have a bag of lime to go with it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, no, you're on to something. This guy might have been involved. Maybe he was friends with that doctor. You never know. Been. We don't know. We yeah. don't know what he did during the week on his nights besides answer like BDC leads from his mom's fucking basement. <laughs> we need to find out. All right, we're going to do our own investigation. Where any key is parked at this doctor's house during <laughs> any of these killings. house? <laughs> yeah. Was Dr. Lecter driving a Kia Soul? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was green. Wasn't it a green Kia Soul? Of course it oh, was. The booger car. The booger car. <laughs> Easily. 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 I can find out where he lived, too. We can totally do some investigation. You may be onto something here. Yeah, he's dead, though, so it's pointless. Right, Not right. really. If we I mean? crack the case, oh. our podcast will go famous. Oh, okay. Alex and I are going to wear masks and steak at the mom. The mom? What yeah, the, the hell mom's house. Do? You know what you have to do? Invite yourselves in pretending to be like anything. I don't know. And Girl Scouts. Look for a smell. Yes. Look for a weird smell. If there's a porch, we got to look under that shit. Oh, yeah. If there's a Wait basement. Wait a minute. How long has this guy been dead? Like two years, I think. When did I tell you? Yeah, I don't think you would know anything anymore. Yeah. I don't is know. Is there a crawl space? I'm going to find we out. We have to find out. in Hicksville. We could probably get the blueprints to the house. Oh, yes. Let's do that. All right. Alex and I have uh, some investigations to do. He definitely killed some hookers. Yeah. Jay, well, you're coming with us. You're, you could be the muscle. <laughs> the muscle? I'm going to beat up a fucking frail old woman? <laughs> hey, she's easy to take down, man. Just do it. Maybe she was involved. You never know. <laughs> I know. You don't know. You never know. The moms so cover everything calling. up. Jen passed away, and now I've got to take all these good hookers out of the house by myself. Dude, <laughs> sometimes the moms cover up that shit. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. like, I mean, was... come on. Let's be honest. Alex's mother would cover up for her. Alex's she mom would. would cover up for me. 100%. Your mom would cover up for you. My mom, my mom would turn my ass in, especially if there was a reward. Fuck it. Yeah, no, I think my mom would turn my ass in. Alex, your mom would cover up for you. She would. Yeah. Just like the time I told her I got pulled over for speeding and I was like, oh, well, I was I told them that I was coming to your house because you fell and you have a bad hip. Yeah. So when I get there, just lay on the floor. She's like, come on. And I'm like, are you going to do it? Or are you going to lay on the floor? She's like, yeah. We come like barging in the house. She's laying on the floor. <laughs> it was a prank. Yeah. One of those like TikTok You never saw pranks. the video? No, it was like the TikTok prank. Yeah. <laughs> That's seriously one of the greatest. Like your mom is ride or die, bro. That's I know. amazing. She is. Patty Mayo That's amazing. is like My legit. mom would be like, I'm not laying on the fucking floor. I hope you get a Dewey. <laughs> so I do a hit and run one day and it wasn't like a full hit and run. It was like I was like on my drug bender, but I was like just sober and I tapped this lady's car and I was on my block. I was on my way to an AA meeting actually. And this woman was weird as fuck. And she gets out and there was no damage to either car. And I was like late to the meeting. So I fucking drove away. And this lady called the cops and I come home from my AA meeting and my mom is in the fucking kitchen baking cookies for the cop. Like he's waiting for you. Oh my God. <laughs> come on, Marge. Oh, Marge. That's her name, Marge? No, it's Maggie, but we call her Marge because one day we're like, what would be the ugliest possible name out of Margaret? And then we're like, Marge. And so Marge Easily. stuck. Yeah, and she goes, don't call me that. She's Marge from now on. <laughs> to everyone. Well, yeah. To everybody. She, she baked cookies for your arresting officer. Did you get arrested? No, no. And I had a suspended license at the time, too. And they just ticketed me because there was no damage to either car. So I was like, dude, this fucking bitch. I gave her my copy of my license and said there's no damage to either car. And then she was one of those that, like, no, legit. It was icy. And I slid a little bit on the ice because I was in a rear, rear, I can't say it, rear wheel drive. I can't and say And you that. work at the car place. Are yeah. you rear wheel drive. Rear wheel about? drive. Yeah. But no, but this is going That's back. like. Dan. Oh, he died. 2000 and like eight or whatever. So it was a long time ago and I slid on ice and I tapped her and she like 
claim that she needed a fucking neck brace from then on. Oh, so my God. She was one of those Probably. weird. No, I was Please. literally two miles an hour, if that. I Like, I was at a stop sign, and I slid. So anyway. I hate people. Yeah, she fucking she, she was she was like in cat pajamas and she got out of her fucking car and it was like smoke billowed out. She was disgusting. I I will never her forget neck that. Break. A yeah. neck break. Yeah. No, <laughs> legit. Like I was like, bitch, I fucking tapped you. I feel like a bicycle hitting her car would have caused more damage than me tapping her at like one mile an hour. So she was looking know. for a fucking payday to buy more cats. Yeah. So I want to talk about one more before we close out. I feel like this serial killer is my favorite one. Speaking of hookers. Mm-hmm. Eileen Warnos. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm not saying yeah. it's right, but I understand. But I understand <laughs> you, Eileen. I mean, if you think about it, what I mean, what was the time, the time period that she was doing like murdering men wasn't it like the 80s or the 70s yeah yeah and she was just like striving for fucking rides she was a hooker well because she had a horrible fucking upbringing Upbringing. so she ran away at like what 12 years old yeah and started just hitching rides with these trucker dudes and then i guess they were raping her or something and then she'd kill them yeah well don't rape people bitch yeah exactly it was all like she was like getting rides from them saying she was going to blow them for the ride and then she would just straight up murder them after they like took her from point A to point B. Yeah, I mean, she didn't want to be a fucking object the way the other girls were, I guess, you know. Yeah. I don't she was a lesbian and she was a les. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um the movie was good. Charlie Theron played her. That, and that was I, a great movie. Great movie. Yeah, and yes. it, it was really hard to believe that that was Charlie Theron because they did such a good job with the makeup and making her ugly, but yeah. it still did not do justice with how truly ugly the real Eileen Warnos was. Oh, she was like, yeah, she East. was a fucking sea donkey. <laughs> <laughs> like Charlie Theron looked ugly, but it was like all right, Charlie Theron in makeup, you know, like. But the real one, woof! But she had no remorse. Like she didn't give a fuck. If you were raped that many times growing up i don't think i would have remorse either but no these men didn't technically well some of them did right some of them fucked with her but some of them they were just giving her rides and she was like bye yeah kill them yeah i think she started to really enjoy the role of being the like man killer you know yeah like she was robbing them at, at you know i think i remember a scene in the movie where there's just like little chubby guys giving her a ride and she like Pulls out a gun and she's like, give me your fucking wallet. Doesn't she like shoot him in the dick or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he like, he fucking, this poor fat guy. Like, I remember feeling bad for him. I'm like, but he didn't rape you? Like, why'd you have to do that? (laughs) She just hated men. She hated men. She loved pussy. It's understandable, though. Like you said, when you, she was through a lot of bullshit. She was raped and treated like a fucking object. And she was like, I'm not doing this anymore. So she became the fucking the killer, I guess you could say. She's my she hero. Loved it. <laughs> she wasn't even. I think she was the first woman ever killed by the by the death penalty, wasn't she? I don't know. She may have been. I'm, Look that up, Alex. I'm, I'm pretty sure she was the first woman killed on death row. That's fucking cool. And it was like lethal injection. So That's like what the fuck did she care? Yeah, in a way, it is right. It's a little bit empowering. Right? To be the because first Because how long were hookers getting a bad rap? Exactly. You know, how long? Woof. I yeah, just saw her that. She's fucking ugly. Between 80, oh, she, she murdered seven TV. men in Florida in 1989 and 1990 by shooting them at point blank range. She was executed by lethal injection. She was married to a dude, which they didn't. Yeah, they had a bad relationship, right? Like. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Wasn't she married super young and he beat the shit out of her and then she ran off? I gotta watch the movie again. Me too. Yeah, yeah now I have to watch it after I watch Dr. Lichter because I need to see the way Jodie Foster <laughs> talks in it. Dr. Lichter. Yeah, I, I have to like, I have to watch this again. I haven't seen Monster in a long time, but that I was a good I watched that movie. as a kid. 
when it came out in yes. theaters or whatever yep. or blockbuster back back it was but i was blockbuster because my dad was watching it and i was like can i watch the movie with you he's like sure <laughs> and then i was like what the family hell? film i was like this isn't jerk or lector <laughs> <laughs> i fucking miss blockbuster man that those were the days Speaking of documentaries and movies, watch the last blockbuster on Netflix. Oh, my coworker watched that, and he was telling me all the Snapple facts on it, and I was like, "Cool." <laughs> I used to love going to Blockbuster on like a Friday night. You know, uh, that was lit. That's like where you saw your homeboys and girls, and yep. like that was the fucking hot spot to go when you would spend like yeah, forty five minutes. Yeah, all the fucking candy they had yep. at the register. Picking out your movie. Yeah. My brothers and I would always rent Wayne's World there, like every single weekend. Now we just sit our fucking fat asses on the couch and push in two buttons and we watch whatever the fuck we want. It's amazing. Uh, you don't miss it at all going to like a video store and I do. Stuff? I was saying that when I was watching the thing. I'm like, I miss that shit. Yeah, but that was fun as a fucking kid. I, don't, I feel like life now. I just yeah, want to experience when you're an adult, who the fuck has the time anymore? I just right? want to experience it one more time. I mean, I can build you a video store. Thank you. Where's the last blockbuster? Oregon. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Do you have anybody else you want to talk about or no? Mm, no. We could do another one like one day, but I got to like bone up on my fucking research here. Yeah, like we could look up pe- ones that people haven't heard of. How about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll do a part two. Yeah, like the Yeah, unknown. I told you. I, I want to talk about that fucking Albert Fish guy because he was fucking... Yeah. You know, is that Iceman? I can't even get into it. No, no. He was just a. Uh, you have to wick at him. Just wick at him, and then you're going to be like, what the fuck? I mean, this guy, like. <laughs> there's literally a part in his Wikipedia article where it says he lit a rag on fire and shoved it in his ass. So. Sounds like my. Weekend. He was, like, into self harm. <laughs> There's guys with fire fetishes. I actually interviewed a guy with a fire fetish, and he would shove, like, light his dick on fire and jerk off while it was on fire. Yeah, you see, like, why is that fun? So he told me this whole thing behind it. It was in one of our episodes. I think it was in our sixth episode that we ever did, the fetish episode. It was fire. It was a fire thing. And he had this sexual fetish where he wanted to burn alive. And like, it was like fucking hot for him. And he would light these like weird things on fire and shove them up his ass. And the flame would go out in his asshole. And he was sending me all these videos. And I have this whole explanation because I asked him why. And he was like, it makes me feel alive. And that's the only time I feel alive. It's almost like how like a cutter like, it's the only time that they actually feel is when they're cutting. It's, like, the self-harm for them. I, yeah, the bleeding thing. But yeah, that I, that I kind of can get. Like, I get that. But, like, this fire thing, I, I got to screenshot it and I'll send it to you. But it was it was in our sixth episode that we ever did. And it, I read, I think I read the whole thing. But it was wild about how he, it's the only time he feels, like, invigorated and alive is when he's watching himself burn. And his whole lifelong goal is to set himself on fire and burn as he's getting a blowjob. My God. I thought getting a blowjob while taking a shit was weird. This shit is out of there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And he has all these videos on like Imgur and Reddit. It's fucking weird. I'll find him. His dick. Yeah. Was, he, he, he had like this big weird gut too. It was disgusting. Yeah, it was gross. You remember that? It yeah. I, I've heard things like that. Like, uh, I've heard of guys who like want chicks to like rub their dicks with a cheese grater till it's raw. Like that to me is disturbing. But when you're going to shove something on fire up your asshole, you are a way different dimension, bro. Mm hmm. Yeah. And he would jerk off. I got to, I'll send you some of the videos too if you want to see them. He would like jerk off as his dick is on fire. But he mastered it so it never burned. Like, you know how, like, you could put your finger in through the fire and it doesn't burn? Right. He mastered yeah, yeah. it so it was coated with Vaseline. And so, like, uh-huh. it never scalded his skin. And he would just rub the fire out while he's, like, burning. Like, his yeah. whole cock is lit up. I mean, to each his own, I guess, right? And if he's yeah. not harming anybody, then why the fuck not? That you we know, know of. That we know of. He's probably burning his victims alive as we speak. <laughs> And then we'll be talking about him too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
All right, oh well, thanks God. for coming on, Jay. Next time we'll do another episode and we'll I'll research more into this. I'm going to finish my book, Sons of Cain, that I'm reading right now. It's really good. And you guys can borrow it afterwards. Well, and then we can do yeah. some other ones. Thanks, Enjoy. Dirk thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. It was fun, girl. Give us five stars, you fucking hooker. What? Or we'll leave you on Gilgo Beach. Yeah, we're going to leave you on Gilgo. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, okay. In a burlap sack. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Burr, Dr. Lerchter. Burr. Dr. Lerchter. Burr. All right, take care. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. Well, that was a different episode. I know. I like those. Alex loves those. She's getting off on it. I am. <laughs> and I'm watching Silence of the Lambs tonight Dr. after you Dr. leave. Lerchter. I got to talk to Dr. Lerchter. <laughs> Dude, we were in Florida two weeks ago, and the entire fucking vacation, she would look over to me and go, Dirk der Lichter. <laughs> She's reading Hannibal. All right, guys, before we close out, Confession, confession Corner. Okay, first confession. My husband licks my armpits. Yes, you did read that correctly. And yes, it's exactly how it sounds. After we got married, he had started hinting at it every so often, just in passing. Then he started straight up asking me to let him do it. And at first it was a very hard no. But after time, I slowly warmed up to the idea and eventually let him try it. Of course, I make sure after I shower and shave beforehand and he clean and I clean again afterwards. That is the only time he would consider it. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry. That is the only time he would want to and the only time I would even consider it. Now we have done it quite a few times. I have asked him what his fixation is, to which he just shrugs. He isn't quite sure. He just likes it. This is one of the strangest out of left field situations I've been in so far. But hey, it doesn't feel bad. I mean, yo, whatever to each their own. I guess if you're cool with it. Here's the thing that I don't get. Like she said that this was after they were married. Yeah, so this just came out of left field. Right. I feel like this would be a fetish that you would do before you got married unless you rushed into the marriage within like three months. This is why you never truly know someone. Right. This guy could also be a fucking serial killer. Mm -hmm. My ex licked my armpit one time, but it was like accidentally and all he got was a taste of deodorant. He was like, bah! Like it was yeah. like in his fucking mouth, my Mitchum. Ew. <laughs> or like our friend Colette, that one guy that like we've shared this in multiple episodes. That one guy paid her, that to lick her, paid her and like didn't let her out of his fucking car when he drove her home, like locked her in and was like, I'll give you 300 bucks to lick your armpits after we were out of a fucking club all night. And yes. she was, okay, give me the money. And she like ran. Bizarre. I mean, I, I, I don't see the fucking fetish, but I don't see why it would be a problem. I don't want you slobbering on me. You in an uh, in an uh, like in my armpit? I don't know. I feel like the ear would be worse. Oh, that's disgusting. Like you know, you lick my pussy. Why not my fucking armpits? Because it's not going to feel good on your armpit. How do you know? Have you ever tried it? No. Do you want me to try it on you? Yeah. It might tickle. <laughs> <laughs> we don't tickle my armpit right now. <laughs> oh my god. She said it doesn't feel that bad. It could be our new fetish. Okay. The armpit tickler. I'll always try anything once. <laughs> All right, how about this next one? Every year for Easter, my family meets up for Chinese food. But this Easter, my grandma was supposed to leave for a vacation to Italy. So we had Chinese food tonight instead. Long story short, I had an upset stomach and I hate shitting anywhere that isn't my house. So I held it in. About an hour after we finished eating, I couldn't hold it in anymore and let out a silent but literally deadly fart that stank so bad my grandma fainted <laughs> she was rushed to the hospital in the ambulance and we found out she had a minor stroke i don't know how to feel should i feel bad i didn't mean to harm her i feel like she would have had the stroke anyway and it's not from your fart yeah stop being so narcissistic i know chill the fuck out the world Unless it was that bad but I mean, is it has it's not it, gonna cause a stroke? And no one's ever died from farting. Farts. Wait, there was this news article back in the day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, wait. I found the news article. Husband convicted of manslaughter after Dutch oven goes horribly wrong. Was a man convicted of manslaughter for accidentally killing his wife with a Dutch oven? Basically, it was this thing 
where he fucking Dutch ovened her. Well, she probably suffocated. And she suffocated. How long was he trying to keep her under there for? It takes a couple minutes to suffocate. Uh, I'm reading it. uh, Receiving a five-year suspended sentence for the actual accidental death of his wife, Gloria Flannery, by toxic suffocation after he gave her a Dutch oven that went, as the judge described it, horribly, horribly wrong. That sucks. Imagine it's like, what are you in jail for? I farted and my killed wife. my wife. Wait, I have to read this, actually. The case of the prosecution argued for the charge of murder, putting it to the court that late one weekday evening as Mrs. Flannery was reading a Jackie Collins novel in bed and unwinding for sleep, she was suddenly and forcibly pinned under the duvet by Mr. Flannery, who sealed the edges edges with his weight, while simultaneously releasing enormous bulbous flatulence. <laughs> How did which, they know? Were they there? I don't know. Which displaced all of the available oxygen so that Mrs. Flannery passed out nearly instantly and was dead within 30 seconds. 30 seconds? You don't fucking and die like, in like, 30 seconds. How would they know that? This, this guy's is, probably a serial killer too and just right. said like, oh yeah, I was giving her a Dutch. It's like when people kill people and they're like, it was a sex game gone wrong. No, you were choking the living choking shit out of me. This is December 2013. Like this is mad old, but I literally remember it. Oh, there's another article too. I'm reading it. Woman stabs man and kills him for farting in her face during an argument. Once again. <laughs> I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I understand. I fucking that shit's get it. gross. I would, I'd probably stab my fucking husband. A drunken Florida woman stabbed her boyfriend with an eight inch blade after he farted in her face during an argument. <laughs> he allegedly killed her lover of six years, Willie Butler, as they watched television in their apartment last week. They were fighting about cash when Butler got up to go to the kitchen and broke wind on her head. She confronted him, and things turned ugly with Butler allegedly throwing a knife at her which missed and then he killed her well wait <laughs> no, she, she, killed, she him. killed him but think about it you're fighting with somebody you're arguing with them and, and you're you ready heated and then the person gets up and farts on your head <laughs> yo that's grounds for murder <laughs> i would throw a fucking plate at my man's head i'd be so mad i'd be pissed yeah i'd be fucking i livid. would call their mom and tell them I used to do that to my fucking ex all the time. Anytime he would like Dutch oven me or like we would fart in the car, I would call his fucking mom and he would be in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> she would get so mad at him. <laughs> I would tell him all the time for it. He would fucking fart in the car and then roll up the windows and think it was funny. And That's I would disgusting. fucking call his mom. <laughs> He'd be like, don't call my mom. He was like 43 years old and I was telling on him. Oh, my God. Anyway, guys, we hope you liked our different episode. We are probably back to our regularly scheduled sexcapades next week. But, um. Dirk to lurker. Bye, Dirk to lurker. Dirk to lurker. <laughs> Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised Disappointed but not surprised